Crown Produce supplying select Canadian retailers. Crown Produce, proud sponsors of Canada West Football and Canadian University Countdown on Shaw. Hey, welcome back to Crown Canadian University Countdown. I'm Ryan Sullivan. This week for the Pro Profile, we check out a former Saskatchewan Husky turned Montreal Alouette. He's one of the best offensive linemen you're going to find in the pros. We check out Mr. Scott Flory. A CIAU second team All-Star, a Vanier Cup champ, eight-time CFL All-Star, two-time CFL Most Outstanding Lineman, and three-time Grey Cup champ. Much like his shirt size, Scott Flory's resume is absolutely massive. He's a 14-year CFL vet that spent his entire career with the Montreal Alouettes. He's learned a thing or two in his time and knows when it comes to teaching the new guys, education is number one. Legit, I don't care who they are. The guys come into this uh, from a CIA school or, or wherever, it doesn't matter, finish your school. Um, you know, the, the numbers are out there, the averages, uh, average career length of pro, three years, something like that. You know, I, you know, I've been very fortunate. Uh, a lot of guys that I play with have been fortunate, but uh, that's the exception, not the rule. And, and first and foremost, get your degree. Flory has a refreshing outlook on the game. It is just a game. He knows that well. And number two on his rookie to-do list is to enjoy the ride. And honestly, I mean, for this sport to be as physical and demanding and as hard as it is, you got to love what you're doing. And if you don't love it, it'll show. And enjoy it, have a good time, and work your butt off. And who knows, go from there. I think most people could guess this, but just where does Scott Flory want to go when his playing days are behind him? Now I wouldn't mind getting into coaching. We'll see where it goes, but uh, I mean, I love this game. I love the, the chess match, the tactics, the physicality, everything about it, so I wouldn't mind trying coaching too. We'll see. All right, there you go. Now put on that snorkel. It's time to dive deep, deep inside the CIS with Connor the Beast Hammond. Now we're talking scholastic athletes this week. You know, battling in the trenches, Ryan, is one of the hardest things to do. These warriors clash on every play. But as we found out with lineman Brett Jones of the Regina Rams, he hits the books as hard as he hits the pads. Work up, work up, go get lead it, Steve. Okay, stop. You know, Frank talks about it all the time. Like, football is a means to an end, and you learn a lot from football. Like, you learn a lot about uh, struggle and coming back from behind and you know sometimes things aren't always perfect so I've learned a lot of flexibility like you don't always have a, the most amount of time to study for these exams but you put in the most amount of time you can and you got to go home happy knowing you tried your best every time you write them. Regina Rams offensive lineman Brett Jones is definitely making the most of his study time. With a schedule packed with film, practice, and games, Brett has still managed to maintain an impressive GPA with the U of R Faculty of Engineering. It, it took a lot of discipline, you know. Uh, a lot of the times the guys would go out sometimes after games, and I'd go out with them, but uh, it'd be tough, you know. I'd have to wake up the next day and still come to the school and do all my homework and stuff. And there's a lot of added pressure, you know, like the test means something to me every time I write, and, you know, you take a lot of heat for that, but... You get over it and you just keep moving because you have your goals that you want to work towards and they have their goals. And... Come on. While Brett jokes about the others giving him a rough time for his academic focus, there is little doubt that they respect him for it and they take full advantage of having him around the study room. He is very generous and he tutors a lot of our guys. He helps a lot of our guys not only in the classes that they're in but also selecting classes. Yeah, I help him out. You know, it's, it's fun sometimes but a lot of the problem is that they just have to sit down and read it themselves. You know, I, I can't teach them to it, teach it all the stuff to them, but they eventually get it, and uh, yeah, they seem to do better after I help them. But it's uh, more on them than me helping them, really. Now, with his university football career winding down and his engineering degree within sights, Brett is about to approach a tough decision: dentistry, a goal he's had since starting university, or with the 2013 CFL draft right around the corner, a potential CFL career. My family and I have talked about that a lot. You know, I've, I've worked so hard at both that I, I don't know what I'm going to do yet. You know, that's, that's why I put so much time into both things. Like, I wake up early in the off-season and do all the training, and I take classes all day, and I, I don't want to put uh, just uh, pick just one yet. You know, I, I want to see what happens and weigh my options when uh, the time comes. 
Brett still has some time to make the decision, and it's clear from talking with him that he'll make the one that's best for him. For Shaw TV in Regina, I'm Christian Molding. Thank you very much for that, Connor. Now it brings us to the roundtable portion of the show. We welcome back, of course, Mr. Jim Mullen, Mr. Andrew Wadden, and from The Score, live from Toronto, Donovan Bennett. Gentlemen, how are we doing? Fantastic. Doing well? Excellent, excellent. Okay, start things out, uh, Donovan, out in T.O. there. Uh, Guelph Western this past weekend. Uh, Guelph just edging them out, 42-39 at the buzzer, so to speak. Is Guelph for real here? I think so. When you look at their team, they're balanced defensively. Kevin McNeil is doing a great job with them. They're front seven. They create turnovers. They get after the passer. They rush their process. Uh, and they're, they're, they've got some holes in the back end with their secondary, but they're allowed to take chances because they get so much pressure up front. And offensively, uh, Jazz Lindsay is doing a great job of managing games, but when it's time to win games late. He's putting this team on his back and doing enough to win. Uh, so putting up you know, 42 points against a tough Western defense is nothing to sneeze at. Uh, Guelph, they play real well at home, and they'll have a good test this weekend at home as they take on the Gales. Donovan, I've got a question for you about that game because Guelph took a huge lead in it. They blew the lead. How important was it for them to come back in that game? And is this a milestone game? for this program considering the resources Stu Lang has poured into it over these last two years? Well, that's a great point and a great observation. And in their locker room all year and all offseason, they had a clock ticking down to this Western game, and it said beat Western. So for them, if they were to you know, get up so big 33-7 to at half – and then find a way to lose to Western, you know, I think the mentality, not just from us as viewers, but in that locker room would have been uh, same old Guelph. You know, we, we've put kind of lipstick on a pig, but at the end of the day, we're the same program. But psychologically, they're buying into what Stu Lang is saying and not just what Stu Lang is doing, you know, with the pocketbook. He wants them to compete on every play, regardless of the score, regardless if you're up big or down big. And that was a different Guelph team that I saw with a different swagger, one that regardless of the score, they have a faceless opponent and they're competing with themselves. I think that more than the money that they've spent is what has them in good stead moving forward. All right, now we're around the halfway point at the moment. Uh, who's your individual award winners come the end of the year? Who's standing out for you right now? Well, in Ontario, um, you know, covering the league, I, I think people across the country know that Kyle Quinlan is the prohibitive favorite uh, for the heck. He, he's going to have, uh, you know, a push from uh, Mr. Lombala, but, but the numbers that he's putting up, you know, it's hard to complete that many passes against air, never mind against tough competition. At one point, his completion percentage was almost as close, uh, almost as high as his average in school when he was up in the mid-70s. So that, those are video game-like numbers, and he throws the ball that much and no interceptions. For me, he's a, a, a strong candidate for the heck with two games left in the regular season. Um, and he's got some help. Uh, Matty Sewell, his left tackle, is 6'8", 320, is scouts salivating about him, can't wait to get their hands on him. Um, but he was a finesse pass rusher. Now he's added a bit of a mauling type to his game, has worked real hard in the offseason in the weight room. And I would be surprised if in the draft he's not the first offensive player taken off the board. For me, he's the best uh, lineman uh, coming out of Ontario and when you're talking about stand-up defensive players, it's tough. You could go back to McMaster again, Aram Isho. Since he's been a starter for them uh, last year, they haven't lost a game. He's just that much of a difference maker on defense. But I really like Mitchell Boss because he doesn't put up the numbers that Isho does, but his value to his defense is so great. He plays all three linebacker positions, also is being asked to play safety at times, and he changes his roles with defensive ends. And... Although in the depth chart he's not listed there, he does some things that defensive ends do. He's so valuable. His wins above replacement, if you will, if this was baseball, is so high. And then when you look at rookies, no one maybe in this conference was ready to play right away like Dylan Walmsley was in Kingston. They stole him out of London. Uh, his two parents are professors at Western. Well, he went to the rival, went down the 401 to Kingston. And when you lose a great kicker like Dan Village and right away you have one – who's a comparable talent, someone who they feel not just CFL, but has NFL aspirations, and a guy who's 
physically a prepared athlete. He has one of the highest bench presses on the team, and he's a kicker. Uh, he's doing all the kicking duties for them, and uh, that's a tough ask for a young player, but he's stepped into that role right away. He's my uh, you know, rookie uh, coming out of Ontario. All right, thank you very much for joining us, Donovan. And uh, as we always do, we'd like to give a shout-out. Uh, Twitter, where can we find you? No, well, I'm at Donovan Bennett, um, and I'll, I'll be doing the University Rush games uh, for the rest of our season. We've got Kyle Quinlan, another great quarterback, and Austin Kennedy this week, uh, Saturday at 1. Looking forward to it. Uh, Donovan Bennett, live from the score in Toronto. We're now joined by J.P. Chouare in Montreal. All right, J.P., Laval, Montreal, starting out in a home-and-home, and Laval didn't just beat them by a tad. They mulched Montreal this past weekend. Is this a sign of things to come for Game 2? I think we're going to have a much tighter game, too. Uh, you know, that first game, Laval got off to a strong start in front of 18,000 fans, so it was really hard for Montreal to kind of get back into this one. And for Laval, the key was, uh, you know, gaining the battle of the, uh, winning the battle of the trenches, both on offense and defense. So Montreal has to win that battle to get a, to get a shot at winning the next one. The, the, the important uh, thing to note now, 19 points. That's the spread that Montreal has to close in. All right, and uh, we're switching things over to uh, the Sherbrooke Variora now. William Dion uh, setting a pretty nice record there. I uh, know a uh, former teammate of yours. Uh, what can you tell me? Do you think he's CFL ready? You know, first of all, I want to congratulate Will on his feet. Amazing on his part. Uh, you know, William, he's a well-rounded kicker, does kickoffs, field goals, punts. He does everything well, but the thing is, he doesn't have the consistency that the CFL is looking for uh, in a kicker, only kicking 71% right now, just below 40 yards per punt. So, you know, I think Will will get a look, but I don't believe he will make it because of the consistency. Now, Jim, you were mentioning earlier uh, a CIS player set the record uh, before a few years back and also missed the CFL mark. Yeah, just a couple of years ago, Aaron Ifield out of the University of Calgary program put his full five years in, kicked 71 field goals, was a great punter as well, but just not good enough for the CFL, and he really didn't get serious looks there. So uh, really you have to be good at two out of three things, out of the kickoffs, the punts, and the field goals and being just strong at one sometimes just isn't good enough to make it to the pro level. And JP, breaking news out of Concordia now. Apparently they've surrendered all their wins this season due to an ineligible player. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and it's a self-disclosed thing. You know, it, on their own, they admitted they had an ineligible player. So for them, their two wins are vacated. So that gives one win to the Bishops and one win to St. Effects. You know, St. Effects is in the mix in the AUS and Bishops. They're right back in with three and three uh, tied with Sherbrooke. And they're playing this week and Sherbrooke against Bishops. So, you know, tighten things up in the RCQ, but definitely bad news for Concordia and their program. And, you know, surely by now, when, when you take a look at things and you look at what happened to UBC, these CIS teams have to go through their rosters and their eligibility forms player by player. Now, from what I understand, after talking uh, with John Bauer of the RSEQ, it was an ineligible player. Uh, he played his high school. He took a year off, and then he went played a year of midget and then went back into the system again. So he had eight years to play. He was actually in his ninth year. It's a 5-8 rule in, in Quebec because of CJEP. But you know what? You've got to go through and check each of these. If UBC wasn't enough of a cautionary tale, I don't know what is. Uh, you're right about that, Jim. And, and, and that's something that just can't happen. You mean you have a full coaching staff looking at that, an athletic director as well. So Coach McGrath missing it on that one. And now uh, we'll see what happens. But definitely, you know, that's not what you want to happen for Concordia. It used to be a great team in the RCQ now at bottom of the league. Yeah, and that's bad news for Jerry McGrath. And he's had a lot of bad news to deal with here over the last uh, couple of years. Doesn't look good for him. Keeping the topics rolling, uh, JP, the major awards at the end of the year. I know we're almost halfway there, but uh, who's standing out in your mind right now? Yeah, and you said we're halfway, and right now for the Heck Crichton Award, it's a wide open race. But uh, Montreal running back Rotron Sané is probably the top guy right now, you know, the leading rusher in the, in the conference. But it's really a wide open race with some Laval players slowly making a name for themselves. Tristan Guenot and Guillaume Ryu stand out. So right now it's going to be interesting to see who steps their game up in the final weeks. Um, for the President Trophy, I have Sherbrooke linebacker Nicola Boulet, leading tackler across the CIS. He's a real playmaker. You know, he got the forced fumbles, fumble recovers, sacks. You know, he does everything from his Mike linebacker position. So Nicola having a great season thus far. Um, moving over to the JP Metro, 
uh, D-Lane uh, from Montreal, Jean-Samuel Jean Blanc, you know, he's the second, uh, second guy across the nation with eight sacks, leads the nation in tackle for loss with 14. He's just making plays after plays this season. And we're, we're used to hearing about David Menard in Montreal, but right now Blanc is the guy uh, that's just atop the boards everywhere. And uh, finishing off with the uh, J.P. Gorman, and uh, I know you like stories, Jim. Shaquille Johnson, rookie wide receiver out of McGill, you know, he's just making plays right now. He's 14 yards in the league. He's top 10 within receptions across Canada. And, and that's not something that you used to see in McGill uh, these past few years. So right now, lots of playmakers just slowly making a name for themselves in McGill and shows that the program is definitely on the rise. All right, now we'll switch things up a little bit. Uh, different conference over to the AUS Major Awards. Mr. Andrew Wadden, who's standing out in your mind? Yeah, well, for the Heck Crichton, you can't go wrong with Kyle Graves. I mean, he got the nominee last year for the AUS. He's the leading uh, quarterback in the conference, and he's in the top 10 in the CIS. So Kyle Graves would definitely be my pick uh, for the Heck Crichton. Moving over to the Metris Award, Rob Jubinville from uh, SMU leads the conference in sacks at 7.5. President's Award going to look at Drew Morris, linebacker for Acadia. Uh, of course, Acadia is at the top defense in the conference. And in the Gorman Award, I'm going with Chris Fanning from Acadia, offensive lineman. Uh, he is a starter in, uh, in his freshman season, which is saying a lot uh, to be in his position. All right, now, Jim, you know your Canada West inside and out. Uh, who's standing out in your mind at the moment? Well, Donovan mentioned Stephen Lombala as a possible uh, Heck Creighton candidate coming out of the West. Now, he may have been the leader at the start of the year, but he's been nicked. He's had to sit out games. He hasn't been taking enough reps. This comes down to two quarterbacks. One from the Calgary side, Eric Dulesky, who runs a, a great option read, maybe the best in uh, all of uh, Canadian university football, maybe the best in college football right now. And then on the other side, Mark Mueller, a fifth-year quarterback with the University of Regina Rams. Right now, my pick is Mueller. Uh, with Mueller and Dulesky, they're 1-2 when it comes to numbers uh, these days. But with Mueller, I think right now he's putting his team on his shoulders. He's lost four receivers, including Mark McConkie, who came into this season with 176 receptions in his career. Uh, he's had to deal with a lot of adversity, and he doesn't have the supporting cast that Dulesky has. I think Dulesky will win a Heck, and he'll become the first American to win uh, a Heck Creighton Award. As for the President's Award, this is where we got to start looking at Calgary. Mike Edom, a transfer that came over uh, from McGill a couple of years ago, moved up from a defensive back position to the linebacker position. Same sort of path that Sam Hurl has taken uh, to the CFL and uh, through the CIS. He's leading the Canada West in tackles right now. Lineman is Kirby Fabian. He's the guy that didn't sign with the BC Lions, decided to come back to the Calgary Dinos, and he's part of an outstanding offensive line. My rookie is Brett Blasco. This guy is Jason Claremont reincarnate. He is a destroyer. He is an absolute machine. And the best thing about him is he's a rookie. We get to see him for the next few years in Canada West. He will entertain you once he gets the ball. Blasco is my rookie pick. So you're saying Randy Moss, distant cousin, former T-Bird, not a contender. Not a contender at all. <laughs> Excellent name, though. <laughs> yeah, it's in the blood. Uh, we're going to throw things over to the big board now. As you can see, uh, McMaster still, I mean, no surprise here, top of the list. Calgary, number two. Laval moves up. They take the third spot this week in the CIS. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us. Thank the crew here once again and everybody on our panel as well. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at CIS Countdown, on Facebook.com slash CIS on Shaw. And let's take a look at the upcoming games of the week. Crown Produce, supplying select Canadian retailers. Crown Produce, proud sponsors of Canada West Football and Canadian University Countdown on Shaw.